Hey everyone, it's May Larson here with Crafting on a Budget, and for this tutorial, we're going to be creating a witch. Now, for this particular witch, I am going to use this pattern that I purchased on Etsy. It was a dollar ninety-five, and it is actually a little snow girl, however, or snow boy, whatever you want to call it. That's ah, a boy, yeah, snow boy. But we're going to make her a witch or him a witch. Um. The patterns that I was looking, um, they were already about $15, and honestly, I didn't want to pay $15. And this one was on sale, originally $6.50, I got it for $1.95, I thought that was a great deal. Um, so I'm going to make some changes as far as he is now going to be a witch. You guys remember, I had purchased these little babies at Joann's, and they were about 70% off, I believe. I can't remember, it's been a while. And so we're going to do, I'm going to do probably two, two of these. This one, I of course, you can see I stitched down here. And then what I did, I um, it sewed another one and I left the bottom right here, two spaces open where I can attach these little legs on later on. So what are you going to need? This is some Augsburg. I think it's called Augsburg. I don't know. Um, I coffee dyed it. I, I made a mixture of coffee, cinnamon, and vanilla to get that nice, rich, primitive look to it. And so then I um, ironed it up a little bit. And I took the pattern that came in. I cut it. I backed it up into really thick cardstock, cut it out. And so I traced, I traced the body right and then once I trace I use the the pen mark as my stitch marker because I'm not really good at sewing that's about the best thing I can do as far as keeping straight with my stitches so I kind of went around that the marking okay now these little X's is of course is where you're going to be attaching your arms and your legs. Now remember I am going to be using, I'm going to be creating two, one with the legs and one with these nice little legs that I picked up at Joanne. So I cut two pieces back to back like that. Then I did the same thing. I took the arms and the, the legs and of course right here you're indicated to leave that open and I traced it on two because you need two arms, right, right, right. And so I stitched down, again, using the marking. And as you can see here, I didn't cut it. Well, I do it that way because it's a lot easier to turn and flip and sew. So just cut about a quarter inch seam, right? Just makes it a lot easier to run it through the machine and try to sew a tiny little arm that thin, you know? It's just, mm -mm. not me. So trace it and then sew it and then cut it. That's what I suggest. Make sure you got two, two pieces so it's sandwiched in. And then I'm just going to kind of snip, snip around those little curves and do the same thing over here. So some of the things that you're going to need for this, of course, is polyfill. A cheap kind is good. You don't want anything very super expensive. Of course, you're going to need your coffee, your vanilla, and your cinnamon to make it smell primitive. Um, you're going to want to set aside a little batch of that because we will be coloring and painting. So you will need some acrylic paints, and I'm going to paint the face. Um, and um, save the little scraps because they're wonderful for other things. So just set, you know, whatever's left over after you've dyed your fabric, set it aside because you're going to need it, of course, for um, whitewashing your, your little doll once you got it all assembled. Now for the head. The leg is the same process. You trace it onto a piece of fabric, sew, and then cut. It's, it's just a lot easier, guys, when you do it that way. Um, just like I did the body here, all I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna trim a quarter inch right around all that and then miter the little et, the, the round areas and then I'll turn it inside out. Um, and then you can iron it, press it, 
you know. So that is what we're doing. I know you guys are just like, where is May? She's like MIA. I get the message. I hear you. I just got, you know, life happens. Life happens and, you know, um, I get busy and then I get lazy. Y'all know, I'm lazy. I, I, I'm the first to admit I am lazy and I, you know, I um, embrace that laziness. All right, so we're going to kind of snip, snip on there. You don't want to get too close to your... That I do know. I don't sew. I don't like to sew as far as, you know, I'm not... I like primitive because it's so... It doesn't have to be, like, precise. Like, you know, you take a pattern and it's like, oh, my God, you got to make sure it's perfect. So that's why I like primitive. I've been doing primitive for a couple of years. All right, so I'm going to wipe my top here because I got coffee. All right, um... So then, for the head, now the head's just a little bit different. You know, it's got to be a big head, of course. So I take the pattern, and again, I back it up with cardstock, really hard, thick cardstock, um, like a 100-pound cardstock, trace it down. Now, here's the dealio on this, guys. So once you have it, if you follow your pattern, it says that this is... Normally on the other one, the black line is your stitch line, but on the head, it's a tip, it's a tad bit different. So you got to cut four pieces of this pattern. I'll put the link below on this video. Oh, and guys, I know I'm like ADD and fast talking, but don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified whenever I upload a crazy video like this one. Like it's like 12 a.m. Who does videos at 12 a.m.? May does. Okay, right? All right, so back to the head, the cabeza. So you cut four pieces. You sandwich up four pieces. So I got one, two, three, four, right? Trace it. And then on this one, we're not using that outside line as our marking or as our stitch line. No, we got to go in about, it says about an eighth of an inch. I preferred, you know, if you go in just maybe a little bit big, a uh, little bit in more, it's just going to be a big head. Uh, but you got to be careful um, because of the seam. So you're going to go in about, she says one eighth. You might want to go in one, uh, a quarter. And, and it depends on how big you want that head. So anyway, cut. And I'll show you this part. I will show you this part. I will take this to the sewing machine because this little baby is a bit different than just stitching your arms the way I showed you that I did the little arms, you know, like cut trace it and sew it and then cut it this one you have to cut right um because it's a little unique in how you're going to get all the pieces together you know it had to be different just had to be there it had to be different save your pieces wonderful for snip snips so here's my here's my my um two arms my two legs, they're already pressed. Here's my head, and this is what I mean. See how big that head is? But it's because that body is pretty, it's pretty significant. Um, it's going to be a big headed person, okay? Just saying. See how big that is? Once you put your polyfill in there, it's going to be pretty big for that body. But, all right, we're going to do it. All right, so you turn, you take these two pieces. You're going to put the two sides that are right together. So these two pieces go like that, two sides, the two right sides together. I'm going to go and sew right down here. I'll put these two together. And I'm going to sew. So I'm going to go on sew on the right. And I'm going to come back and show you what I do next. But guys, don't forget, we have a sale on the 17th, um, and we got tons of goodies. So I'm going to go in and put my needle down, and you want to backstitch on this, guys, because you don't want it to open up on that front part. All right, I'm going to go in. And 
know you're probably laughing at me because I'm a slow sewer. That's okay. Slow and steady wins the race, right guys? All right, back stitch, pull it out. Right, grab, so I'm gonna show you. So we sewed down one side only. Snip this here. One side only, up to the tip tip. And you can grab your pins. So, you know, scissors, polyfill pins, um, muslin, or the Augsburg um, oxen. I, I don't know. O S N A B U R G. Y'all know. English, no muy bueno. Anyway, um, you need some hemostats, some acrylic paints, your coffee, your vanilla, your cinnamon. Save some aside because we're going to some dry brushing or wet brushing or whatever you want to call it brushing um, a pen or a marker to trace your sewing machine sewing needles because you will be attaching the legs and the body um, and the head I think that's about it guys so anyway stop the yakety yak all right so then we're gonna take and open we're gonna um, sew down this one right and I'll be back Yak, 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 May yak, yaks. All right. So I'll show you how to put this together. How you decide to decorate her, that's entirely up to you. Everyone has a person. And you know, you don't have to um, make her a witch. You can definitely make it a little snow boy or a girl. You know, you gotta be girls. But I do like my little snow. I love snowmen. I love, love, love snowmen. And I had done a snowman a couple years ago. All right, so now we have that, right? And we were live when we did that snowman. All right. <sighs> Just lives. Sometimes take my time and, you know. All right, so then we have these. So we're gonna take them and put the two right sides together, like so. And you can take your pins and you can pin, like so, pin your edges. So you're gonna sew down here and then you're gonna go zoop all the way around. So you're gonna just go like that. I'm gonna start on my right and just go all the way around. And I'm not pinning, I'm just gonna, I'm too lazy. Honestly, guys, I am lazy. So um, I'm just going to go zoop all the way around, okay? Why am I going to fake it? I'm lazy. I'm honestly lazy, guys. It's take too much effort to stick, stick all those darn pins. So I don't like doing stuff like that. The effort is so real. I don't know if you guys can understand what I mean as far as, you know, you get so lazy about all that. It's like, who needs to pin it? All right, let's get this in. Let's get this in. So there we have that. So then let me snip all this thread. And here left with that. And you can take it down, see what I mean? I just kind of um, when I attach those two pieces like that, I fold down that and that, and this I just went zoop all the way around. And that was that. And then we're left 
with this little guy. So then you take it over to your um, um, iron and you iron it out, press it down, you know, and you get it nice and pressed and then get it ready for stuffing. See? So you see? All right, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now that came with a little pattern for, um, a, you know, a top, and I'm probably going to do that. And I'm and chances are I might just make this a, a snow guy. I don't know, and make a witch because I honestly don't need two witches. Um, honestly, I haven't even, other than that one project we did together, I haven't really decorated for Halloween this year. It's just other than I let Nani decorate her room. Um, yeah, guys, just lazy, pure laziness. I got, I've been busy, you know. Trying to get stuff ready for that auction that we're having, the, the vintage market sale and um, all that takes, it consumes you, it takes a lot of time out of your day doing things, looking for things. And anyway, so we pressed it and it looks pretty and then bada bean, bada boom, the head's good to go. So it looks like that. See? All right. So now we're going to start with our polyfill. Now there's different types of hemostats. There's this little one also called a forcep. I've had this for years now. It's one of my doll um, hemostat or forcep. And you can use that um, to, you know, insert your, your polyfill. Um, I'll show you how the easy way to pull out your. So here, did we snip, snip the corners? Snip, snip I didn't snip. Yeah, I did. All right. So this is how you're gonna do it. This is how we do it. So you take your forcep, your hemostat, whatever you want to call it. Potato, papa, tomato, tomate. All right. Pinch on one end of the fabric, not both, and then kind of slide, slip and slide, slip and slide. Right. And of course, you know, when you're live or you're recording, like nothing ever seems to go like perfecto because, you know, it's like they know, someone knows, a force knows that you're recording. See, just slip it. And then iron that, right? We'll do that again. Go in. Oh, did I snip this right? Look at that. How horrible. How rude of me. I don't know. Sometimes I have to question my brains. That's snipped. If you have like the legs, you can use a bigger one. You need use some um, skewers or you know, big, um, you know, when you go to eat Chinese food at a Chinese restaurant, they always give you those um, chopsticks. Grab some of those. Those are really good for um, stuffing. It really, really is. So, guys, I changed my camera around. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I kind of um, got this other little device to hold the camera. Um differently. I also don't know. I struggle sometimes even with lighting. It's like the angle, lighting, everything is such and I was watching this um me and Eric through um London Warriors. Just catching the right. Um, we were watching this streaming thing that was being taught yesterday. And um oh, I released it. I don't want to release it with pipeline it's supposed to help like with gamer I'm not really a gamer but supposedly it's supposed to help you know give you some pointers so I'm hoping that we can get some insight on that not it's a membership monthly membership that I have to do um, to get figure out this YouTube thing I'm not really good tech savvy I don't like editing videos. I just find that so boring. If I had to sit there and edit a video, it's like, ugh. all right. So get something like a paintbrush, put it in, because it has like like nice little round corner where it's not gonna poke a hole. 
So you want to round those out really nice and then flatten it out and press it with your iron, okay? So that's that. Let's do the, the body so we can at least have some type of um, It's like the bigger body, it's not too bad. It's the little things like the arms and the legs. It's like, ah. Uh. I used to have this little toy. I don't know if I still have, that I used to have when I was doing dolls in 2013, that, um, That kind of, um, you pulled it in, you put the little piece in and you kind of, it was like a tube and you pushed in a piece of the fabric and then pulled it out. I don't know. It's supposed to make it easier, but I just found like using my forceps, pinching one piece of the fabric was just, all right, so you want to just kind of like, see that? Round it up just to give it a nice shape. You don't want to poke too hard and see that those little holes there is where we're going to stick those legs, her sexy legs, you know. She's got some sexy legs. All right. So there we go. That's the body. I'm going to take this over and I'm going to iron it. So then I'm going to go ahead and stuff and you can just stuff these babies in. I haven't figured out on the Apple how to fast forward or how to join videos. So, um, Okay, I wish I knew how to figure that out, but I don't. I stick it on the corners. Because if I knew how to fast forward, I would fast forward so you're not seeing me like stuff all this. But ideally, this is what we want to do. We want to stuff everything in, and I'm probably going to do that. So you're not just sitting here watching me um, stuff because that's probably boring. So I'm going to show you. You want to make sure you get all those little push in as best as you can. Get those corners nice and firm. Another thing you can do is you can use cat litter, fresh, clean cat litter. Don't, don't go into your cat box and pull out some nasty cat litter. Like, no, no, no. Fresh, clean cat litter. You can fill it up. Of course, this one has a hole in the bottom because I'm going to be using those little legs that I picked up at Joanne, so you don't want to um, do that. But just remember, and this is going to be stuffed, so we got to make sure sexy legs here fits in here just like that. I want to go ahead and Get those legs in there so she's gonna go in just like that so what you want to do is um, once you have that you can use you can use um, clean cat litter and her legs are probably going to be moving everywhere um, and you can probably put her towards the end the only thing is just, it's gonna be really firm so I am going to put her toward the end I'm just gonna have to jam her in um, so otherwise, she's going to be smacking those legs all over the place. Um, no, I don't want that. 
So yeah, you can put some um, cat cl clean cut clean cat litter and fill it up. It gives it a nice firmness. Um, and I do. I could have, should have, would have, could have used our cat litters, but um, I didn't feel like going downstairs and grabbing it. So we're just gonna. We're going to stuff, I'm going to be back, I'm going to stuff all my doll parts and then we'll be back and we'll work on a part two. Um, and on the part two you'll see the body completely stuffed um, and then we'll attach the body parts. So, so far this is what we have. We have the body and this is, um, I'll link below, this is the um, where I got it on Etsy, Peach Bottom Primitives by Denise Jones. And it is the Primitive Snow Boy full full size snowman doll and a candy cane. But we're not we're not making a snowman. Um, not I mean you could you could for those of you guys that don't like the witchy stuff, um, you could um, you know. Um, but you will be needing plenty of polyfill. So. Um, yeah, let's let's stuff and we'll be back for a part two because I don't know how to connect videos together. Y'all know me. Um, so we'll make this like 30 little 30 minute segments and um, try to keep it somewhat, you know down my 30 minute segments, but um, this will give you at least an idea of how to get this far in your videos and, or not your videos, gosh, me, I'm all over the place. Anyway, this far in your doll. Whether it's a witch or a snowman, whatever your taste or your flavor of the day it is, we're going to do both. I think I'm going to do the witch and then I'll save the other one to make a snowman. Because, you know, that's just how I flow. And I, I do need to show you something. So, this one has a body. This is the clothes, the, the romper. It has a part A and part B. Cord, I backed it up with some thick cardstock. You're going to cut both pieces and tape it, so you're going to connect them like that, so that way it's a big body. But you want to always size to make sure it's the right size for your little your little doll there. Um, and then trace it, and that particular one, I know you have to trace it onto the fold line, so just always follow the directions of your pattern. And um, check out this store that I'm telling you she had. I don't know how long that sale is for. I just got it. What's today? So today technically is now Sunday. I got it Saturday um, and it was $1.95 and she had some other neat Christmas. I love the Christmas primitive stuff so I got a couple Christmas primitive stuff um, to make because I love Christmas. Who doesn't like Christmas? Um, that's my favorite holiday. Um, but um, go check it out. See all the goodies she's got. If you're into primitive stuff you'll definitely love her shop. And I don't know how long that sale is going to be, but jump on it. Jump, jump, jump on it. So I'm going to go ahead and keep stuff in. Um, this, and we'll be back for a part two, and hopefully we'll have all the body parts stuff. So see you on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share my videos, and let me know what you think about this video and also for any other upcoming video ideas, drop me in the comments below what you would like for me to create next. Till next time, part two will come. Bye.